A critical part of our data analysis and statistics is understanding the type of data we're looking at, whether categorical or quantitative. In this video, we'll define these two terms and see some of the nuance that comes into play when trying to classify data as quantitative or categorical, and we'll of course look at several examples. As we've discussed, when we collect data, we're collecting variable values for a set of individuals. For example, one variable could be height, and we collect different height measurements for a set of individuals. A variable could be color, and we collect and record the colors of different vehicles. The two main types of variables are categorical variables and quantitative variables. A categorical variable places an individual into one of several groups or categories. This could be the city that they live in, or it could be the color of a car, or it could be the breed of an animal. On the other hand, a quantitative variable takes on numerical values with which quantify something. They have units, and taking averages of quantitative variables makes sense. For example, you wouldn't calculate the average eye color of students in a class, but you might calculate the average GPA of students in a class. This may seem very simple at a glance, and in practice it is very simple oftentimes, but we do need to be careful. One word of warning is that not every variable that takes numerical values is quantitative. A quantitative variable definitely needs to take on numerical values, but just because a variable does take on numerical values doesn't mean it has to be quantitative. For example, phone numbers, zip codes, social security numbers, this is all data that takes on numerical values, but they're not quantitative variables. They're not actually quantifying anything. Someone's phone number does not have units. It wouldn't make sense to calculate the average phone number of students in a classroom. The zip code is not quantifying anything. There are no zip code units. These aren't quantitative variables, despite the fact that they do take on numerical values. To make things even more difficult, whether or not a variable is categorical or quantitative doesn't depend purely on what it is, it also depends largely on why the data is being collected in the first place. In a previous video, we discussed the individuals and variables that make up a data set. That's the who, who is being studied, and the what, what is being measured. But as we see now, the why is also important. For example, suppose Instagram wants to know the average age of those who uploaded a reel in the last month. Since they want to know the average age, they would be collecting this as as quantitative data. They collect the ages of those people and then find the average. On the other hand, if they wanted to know your demographic information, they want the age part of your demographic, you're a teen, a young adult, an adult, or senior, they could categorize it in many different ways. If they wanted to know that to determine what clothing to advertise to you, then they'd collect age as categorical data, placing you in one of these brackets. Are you a teen and so they may advertise clothing that teens like, or are you a young adult and they would advertise some different clothing? Depending on why the data is being collected, a different level of detail may be more useful to whoever is doing the collecting. Again, our methods of analysis depend significantly on the type of data being analyzed. So if we were going to collect data, we would need to think about why are we collecting this data, and what's the best way to collect it, what should the variables be, how should we be measuring them. For example, should we collect age as an exact number, or should we just get rough demographic information, which would be more useful. A few more rapid-fire examples, some typical categorical variables are gender, left or right handedness, someone's native language, and eye color. Some typical quantitative variables are height, weight, grip strength, and salary. And although these variables seem inherently categorical, any of these quantitative variables could make a transition to the categorical section depending on why it was being collected. For example, in combat sports, weight, of course, is specifically measured, but it's treated as a categorical variable. Are you a lightweight, a heavyweight, a middleweight, etc.? You could also imagine salary being treated as a categorical variable as we try to analyze 
analyze low earners, medium earners, high earners, and so on. And what it would even mean to be low income also depends on further context, like where you are, and certainly when, what time are we? If you're in the modern day, then a certain level of salary could be okay, but it might be a bounty of riches in the perspective of someone 100 years ago. All this to say that data is totally useless without context. Context, who, what, when, where, why, super important. Let's finish with the data we were discussing last time. Say that our friend Tom records the following data on cars that his coworkers drive. We're going to identify the variables, classify them as categorical or quantitative, and state the units if applicable. Remember that quantitative data will have units. In our data table, we can see that the variables are the columns, model, year, color, and so on. So take a minute and try to identify each one as categorical or quantitative. I'll put the answers on screen now. You probably got most of these right, but you may disagree with me on a few. Certainly model is categorical. Year is also categorical. You can kind of think of the year as an extension of the car's model. It's like being more specific. Uh, Hyundai Sonata, well, specifically it's a 2022 Hyundai Sonata. Additionally, the year isn't really quantifying anything because just because it's a 2022 Hyundai Sonata, that is describing the model. It didn't have to be manufactured in 2022. Color is obviously categorical. The number of cylinders, while it is quantifying something, would typically be treated as a categorical variable. It's unlikely that we or Tom or anyone would be calculating the average number of cylinders in some set of cars. If it's difficult to imagine cylinders as a categorical variable, you can also think of it as just measuring levels of power. We have a few different categories of power levels based on the number of cylinders in the vehicle. And whether or not a car has a navigation system, of course, is categorical. The quantitative variables were pretty obvious with the units given in the table, gas mileage, which is in miles per gallon, and the weight of the car, which is in pounds. So that's a bit about categorical and quantitative data. I'll also mention that categorical variables are sometimes called qualitative because they're describing qualities of something rather than quantifying something. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my statistics course and statistics exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching. Bye.